Pablo Martinez is asking us what is supersymmetry. In one sentence, I can tell him supersymmetry is a principle which treats matter and forces in the equal footing. What do I mean by that? Let's see. Physicists came out with a very nice theory, which is known as the standard model, which explains very well particles, interactions, and three of the known forces that we know. For instance, the weak forces, the strong forces, and electromagnetism. In the standard model, we have matter particles, which are quarks or leptons, and force carriers, which are Z, W boson, photon. If you look at standard model on the first side, you will see that all the particles seem to be massless. And then they invented a very nice mechanism in order to generate the masses of all those particles. They introduced a new field, which is called Higgs field, which predicts that there should be one boson, which is called Higgs boson, which should give masses to all those particles through the interactions with that field. We have observed that particle. We know the mass is very small compared to the uh, scales at which the gravity is dominating. So the question is, we don't really understand why the mass of this particle is the small, it's very small as compared to that, the, the, the scale at which the gravity is dominating. People come up with many formalities, many ideas to try to explain that, and one of them is the supersymmetry. Uh, supersymmetry, as I was saying, is a principle which treats forces and matter on equal footing. In the sense that if you take the standard model, the quarks and leptons, which are fermions, meaning that they have spin half, half integer, the supersymmetry predict that they should have cousins, which we don't see yet, which should have spin integer, integer spin, and in the limit that the, 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 the principle is an exact symmetry, the masses of such particles will be equal to the fermions of the standard model. They should have the same charge, the same interactions, the same couplings as the standard model partners. In the same way, if you take and force carriers, you also predict that they have a cousins which are uh, which have a half integer spin, the same coupling, as I said, the same everything. So in some sense, supersymmetry is kind of duplicating the particle content of the standard model. You have the standard model, and then you predict that there is a, there is a cousin of the standard model but the problem is that we don't observe such particles. We don't see them. So these particles cannot have the same mass because we don't see them. So what is generally assumed is that supersymmetry is not exact. You have to find a way of explaining why they don't have the same mass. Of course, all the remaining Quantum numbers, I mean, charge, interactions, couplings, remain the same, except the mass and the spin, which are different. That, that's the, the general principle of what supersymmetry is. Okay, what is exciting about this? But the nice thing about this is that by duplicating this, as I mentioned before, the Higgs mass, which was not understood within the standard model, now can be clearly understood. Duplicating the particle content of the standard model within the framework of supersymmetry allows to explain why the mass of the Higgs boson is where it is and why it is exactly small as compared to the Planck scale where the gravity is dominating. There are some additional features For example, 
This particle are not observed but in most models of supersymmetry. The lightest particle of, of those cousins is stable and has the right properties to be a candidate for dark matter. Within the supersymmetry framework, yes, we have a particle which can have the right property to be that, that, that dark matter. On top of that, if you take the standard model alone and you try to pause the coupling constant of the three of the forces, the weak, strong, electromagnetic, it tend to, as the energy goes higher, they tend to meet in some one place. The standard model. This, this is in the standard model. So they tend to meet in a, in a, around some region, but they do not meet exactly all three in the one place. They are crossing each other in some region, which is, which is very high. But when you include the cousins of the standard model within the supersymmetric framework, what you observe is that they meet exactly in the same place. And even gravity, which is a similar weak term, to go in that direction also. It is rather elegant and nice to see that within a standard model, you can at least explain, you can expect that all the couplings that we know tend up to have the same value at some scale, which is somehow large. From the current model, it has to be around 10 to about 16. GG. It is somehow nice to see that the supersymmetry particle allows us to unify all the forces. And in some sense, to, we can understand everything that we see around in the framework of supersymmetry.